Good morning. Uh, good thing going. My name's talking about storms, and I got a cold, and it's the prettiest day we've had in two or three weeks. But I'm talking about a different kind of storm today. Got to come a little bit higher than Rachel's. You know when we. When we know a storm is coming, we can prepare. We can get ready. We can get what we need. And uh, yes, this is my daughter's umbrella. But uh, often in life, the storms I'm going to talk about today are different kind of storms. And the protection that we need doesn't come from an umbrella talking about the storms, real life storms. And uh, we've had some doozies the last few weeks and my yard is just now drying up. So I've had plenty of time to sit back and look at storms and think, God, what are you trying to tell me? But uh, I'm talking about the struggles in our lives. And I look out over the audience and we've shared all kind of struggles together. All kind of storms. Today I'm going to call our our struggles, our crisis in life. That's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about storms today. And uh, I've got a friend who's in the process of becoming a minister and uh, or, or going through the ordination process. I know we're, we are all called to be ministers in life, but he's actually in the process. And one of the things that I, was, I, I shared with him is through our life experiences, just about everything that I've seen or experienced, there's usually something to learn from there. And uh, I think that God speaks to us and then we share what we have learned with other people, with each other. Uh, like I said, some storms you see coming and you prepare, and those are the easy ones. But then sometimes, boom, it happens. A storm comes out of nowhere. Sometimes you get a phone call all of a sudden, and uh, your wife is in ICU and she's bleeding. And all of a sudden, you feel all alone. And you don't know where to turn. Or you don't know who to turn to. And all you can do is think to pray. Sometimes things in life just happen. Uh, We're going to talk about a storm today, a parable. Uh, If you've got your Bibles, turn with me. Thank you. To Mark chapter 4. Verse 35 through, 30, uh, 35 through 41. And we're going to talk about a story that we've, a lot of us have heard, maybe not all of us, but most of us have heard the story about where Jesus and the disciples go across the Galilee. And, and you know, Jesus is asleep and the storm hits. We're going to talk about that. But we're going to talk about it as it pertains to Christian life. Uh, do you have that? No, we do not have that verse. I probably forgot to give it to him. So I will read it to you. The same evening, Jesus suggested that they cross over to the other side of the the lake, Galilee. With Jesus already in the boat, they left the crowd behind and set sail along with a few other boats that followed. As they sailed, a storm formed. The winds whipped up huge waves that broke over the bow filling the boat with so much water that even the experienced sailors among them were sure they were going to sink. Jesus was back in the stern of the boat, sound asleep on a cushion, when the disciples shook him awake. Shouting over the storm, Jesus, they cried, Jesus, Master, don't you care that we're going to die? Jesus got up, shouted words into the wind, and commanded the waves. That's enough. Be still. 
And immediately the wind died down and nothing, died down to nothing. The waves stopped. How can you be so afraid? Ye of little faith, after all you've seen. The disciples were still afraid, slowly coming to grips with what they had seen, and they said to one another, Who is this Jesus? How can it be that he has the power over even the waves and the winds of the sea? Won't you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we all experience storms in life. Some we see coming and some just happen. Catch us by surprise. And before we know it, we're consumed and we're beaten up and we feel all alone, Father. And Father God, that's when we need to turn to you. As we go into this message, Father, I know you're here. We welcome you here. Soften our hearts and open our ears so that we may hear the message that you have for us today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, here's a very popular parable. And it paints a striking picture of Christian life. The last few weeks, um, I don't know why, we like TV. But my family and I, for some reason, we kind of been experimenting with something new. Not to say that I like it, but we've been leaving the TV off. At first it was hard. I like TV. I work all day long and when I get home, I like to watch TV. But you know, as time goes by, we actually start doing things that we're not used to doing nowadays and that's talking with one another and praying with one another and thinking about memories. Uh, they got this thing on Facebook and I have... I have uh, different feelings about Facebook. I don't really think that Facebook is worth much. But they have this new thing that they do now. They, they spit out memories. Memories of pictures that you've put on your camera from long ago. And every time you turn around, there's new memories. And I've seen, and we talk about these memories. Some of them have been good experiences. And some of them have been bad experiences that turned good. And... Uh, but when we think about Christian life, Christian life is never plain sailing. We've all got lots of ups and downs. Rarely have we gone, I'm not being negative, but sometimes we don't go very long with smooth ride. My life, I, I can tell you, has been more like a roller coaster. A bunch of ups and downs, good times and bad times. The journey I'm talking about is our journey from earth up to heaven. And that is our journey of its ups and downs. Sometimes life gets stormy. Our faith fails us. And sometimes it feels like God's sleeping. I've asked God, hey God, don't you see what's going on in my life? Do you care? We're tempted to ask God that sometimes. Do you care? Sometimes life gets fearful. Like the storm in this story, we find ourselves getting swallowed up and we become so overwhelmed with what's going on in life. And I'm going to get to the different things. Rachel, you hit it right on the head. We've all got tough times. We've all been through different kinds of storms. And we're going to talk about some of those, but... A storm is a storm, and we're going to get to that. We're going to find out exactly what is a storm. But we become overwhelmed. We feel consumed, crushed. I've gone home and fe felt beat up, all because of life. Storms are never easy. It's easy to look at the storm from inside the living room and look out the window. But nobody wants to go out there in the middle of a storm, do they? Storms can be frightening. Are you going through a storm today? Are the waves of life hammering your ship and you find yourself feeling like, 
I'm not going to make it. I can't do this anymore. I can't take it anymore. I'm tired. What's the definition of, of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over and over and never getting any results. I'm tired of doing the same old thing. I've been there. Um, we've got all kinds of different storms. Storms can be big. They can be little. First thing I'm going to talk about is storms. The storms that I'm talking about are our crises in life. The tough times. The dark moments when things happen. Um, it can be a small storm as small as getting off work at 4.30 on Sunday morning and being expected to bring the message by 10.30. I found myself saying, I can't do this. i got to get some sleep. I haven't had any sleep. I haven't had anything to eat. I can't do this. I feel overwhelmed. I start to panic. And you know what happens? God says, hey, I got this. All I'm asking for is for you to be obedient. I've got the word. All you've got to do is bring it. So after a little bit of breakfast from our, our Kevin and Sylvia and two Mountain Dews, I'm here bringing the word. Sometimes our storms come at 6 o'clock on Sunday morning when half of our praise team decides that they're not going to be here or they're sick or they're on vacation. Hey, that's a storm. And I, 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 if you ever you have a moment when you're out and about and you're greeting each other and you find some of these praise team members, tell them what a great job they do. Because those that are here today are, are always here, whether it's raining outside or whether it's sunshine. And they're bringing God's Word through music to us. They do a great job, even when only half of them are here. Um, so in our story, when we're talking about storms, many of the disciples that we were talking about in this parable were fishermen. That's what they do for a living. I work at the hospital. I help people. That's what I do for a living. That's what God called me to be. It's a different kind of ministry. Some of you I've seen at the hospital once or twice yourself. But these guys were fishermen. They're used to being outside. And we might think that those guys were kind of stupid for setting out on a trip and didn't even check the weather. But back then, they didn't have weathermen like we do nowadays that only gets the weather right 50% of the time. All they had to do all they were able to do is look out outside and say, hey, it looks good today. It's a good day. Well, we'll take a trip. That's all they could do. All they could do was go by how the weather was at the moment. They didn't have a meteorologist. Um, so in our parable, when they started out in their trip, it looked clear. The seas were calm. There was no indication that this little trip across the Galilee would be anything but safe. Then, out of nowhere, came the storm. I do not know about Greek words, but I did some investigating, and uh, of course I used my daughter's internet, because she's good at that, and I found out what the Greek word, what is storm? What is the storm that they're talking about in this parable? And maybe if I tell you this, then you'll understand, well, you will understand the power of our living God. See, we're not talking about ordinary wind. We're not even talking about strong wind. We get strong winds out here sometimes. The Greek word for storm actually means whirlwind with violent and furious gust of wind. They uproot trees. They tear down the, they, they tear our roofs apart. People die because of storms. There's no way to knowing that there was no way of knowing that this storm was coming. That's life. That's what I'm here to talk about today. 
the storms in our lives. That's part of our life. And there's no way, there's no way to get around it. Life can be just fine when a storm comes down on us. It could be a phone call with some bad news. It may be something that threatens everything that you hold dear in your life. Your home. Your family. Your marriage. Your job. And it comes with no warning. Storms have no mercy. And they have no respect for you and your goals in life. But God, this is what I wanted. Any crisis can be a storm in life. Cancer. Something as small as stress. Depression. A storm could be loss of a loved one. Divorce. You know, as a, as a minister, I, I have opportunities to praise, to praise with people. I love interacting with people. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's bad. Sometimes it's something bad that turns something good. Um, I've had chances to pray together. I've had opportunities to talk about bad things. People in our lives that think that living without God is greener on that side. And something happens in life and their life comes to an end. And they waited one day too long to find Jesus as their Lord and Savior. We don't want that to happen. It's called crisis. And when you're in it, there seems like no way out. The next thing, there's certainly no immunity for us Christians in storms. You know, I, I remember the day when I surrendered my life to Christ. And it was a great day. And, and there was healing involved there. And I, I thought, man, life is going to be great now that i found Jesus. But you know what, what they didn't tell me is until later, there's still going to be storms. There's still going to be hard times. Just because we become Christian doesn't make us different than anybody else. Non-believers have tough times too. We're going to get to that. I can't, I can't jump ahead. I like to jump ahead. I can't jump ahead. We all have storms. Whether we have Jesus in our life or not, storms are just life. There's no immunity for us. I got a couple of scriptures here. Um, we're just going old school today. There's no notes. There's no videos. There's no movies. We're just going to go old school and just go straight out of the Bible. Hope y'all don't mind. Philippians chapter 1 verse 29 says, For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. Job 5, 7 says, Yet man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly upward. That was tough for me. I read that several times. Job 14, 1 says, Man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. You see, this story that we're talking about, the disciples, the sinking disciples, they were in trouble. They knew they were in trouble. As the storm got worse and the water rolled over the top of the ship, they were bailing water out as fast as they could and the boat was still sinking. They were staring death in the face and all the while, where was Jesus? He was asleep. Sound asleep. It seemed to them that Jesus was being uncaring and he was unresponsive to their needs. They cried out, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Jesus, don't you care? Don't you love us? I felt that way. I 
Aren't you moved by our situation? I share a brief moment in my life when actually I asked God, don't you care? God, why would you do something so horrible to me? See, you all know Bella. She's my pride and joy. She's Besides my relationship with God and my love for my wife, she's my everything. But there was a time in my life that I had a child. And this was my life before God came into my life. I grew up as a Christian as a kid, but... So many of us, when we get old enough and say, man, when I get old enough, mom and, see, mom and daddy made us go to church. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. There was no, do I want to go to church? Mom and daddy made us go to church. That's just what we did. So when I became grown, I thought, when I become old enough, I ain't going to church. Because I make my own decisions. I do what I want. Mom and daddy can't tell me what to do anymore. And that's what I did. So I ran from God for a long time. And I met, had a job. I met a girl. We had a baby. Something happened while the baby was in her belly and her water broke too early. See, I thought that my calling in life was to become a daddy. Everything I did in life, I didn't go to college. What mom and daddy taught me was to get a job so that I could raise a family. And that's all I knew that was going to happen in life. That's the only goal I had, was to become a father. Some things happened. Her water broke early. They had to induce labor a little over halfway. I can't remember the details, but she, she was a little over halfway. I work in surgery. I work at a hospital. I deal in emergencies all the time. I'm thinking, I can handle this. No problem. Things happen. They'll save her. That's what people do. Everything was great until one day when they induced labor, he said, he had this baby, and he said, here, you hold him. All of a sudden, life became so real. All of a sudden, I felt so alone. That baby only lived for 30 minutes. And he died in my arms. So what I'm getting to, and I don't, I, I don't mean for this to turn into a long story, what I'm getting at is when this happened, I was so angry. Everything that I had been taught in life about us serving a loving God, and I was angry with God. And I felt like this, like we're talking about here. I felt all alone. I felt like, hey God, why would you do something like that? I'm a nice guy. I live a good life. Why would you do something like that to me? And I stayed angry with God for a long, long time. And it took some great friends in my life that taught me that God didn't take my son. I'm not saying that the devil took my son, but God did not do that. No, it says the enemy comes to kill, and kill, steal, and destroy. But I have come so that you can have life. Anyway, sometimes things happen in life and you wonder if God is really there. Is he listening? Does he really care about what's going on in my life? The storm is of concern. The next part I'm going to talk about is this storm that we're talking about, just like I mentioned before, it concerns sinners too. It's not just us. Just because we're in church doesn't mean that we're any different than the people out there. Mark made an interesting observation in verse 36, and it says something like, And there were also with him other little ships, See the difference 
and those ships and the ship that's in this story is Jesus wasn't in those ships. Jesus wasn't in that boat. Lost people have storms too. They have problems, they have heartaches, they have hurts, they have difficulties just like us. Sometimes we think we'd be better off on the other side, going back to the old life. The grass looks greener. Do you really think the unsaved have it any better than us? Why is it when two people who grow up in the church and are active in the church and everything's going great, why is it when troubles in their marriage start and both of them leave the church? When times get tough, why is it that people who've been clean from drug addiction go back to the previous life that they've been 15 years ago? Well, you know what? I don't have to listen to her anymore. I can do what I want. Life is better that way. I don't have to worry about anybody but myself. I can smoke a little bit of joint. I can go back. Life will be better. I'll just find somebody else. I'll find somebody who does what I want. Lost people have storms too. And sometimes we think we'd be better off on the other side. They were experiencing the same storms in their little boats as the disciples, but the difference is Jesus was in the disciples' boat. That's the whole punchline to this parable. With Jesus in our vessel, we can smile at any storm. And as life comes, it doesn't mean that the storms get fewer and fewer, but we grow stronger and stronger in our faith because we experience Jesus in the boat. Amen? Each time we experience Him, we gain strength. And we've all got our own weaknesses. Um, as a young Christian, I was taught that when you're doing something for God, the devil attacks you where you're weakest. Well, for each of us, that part in our life where we're weakest is different. For me, it was my, my relationship with my wife. Um, we've had our good times and our bad times. And I've shared that with a lot of people. And some of you are family who have been there through it all. But there's a reason why I'm still married today. That's because I made Jesus in my boat. I made a seat especially for Him. I don't go anywhere without Him. The deepest, darkest time when I thought all was over. I thought my ship is going down and there's no way I'm going to save it. And the one thing that Jesus told me was to love your wife. And He told me that over and over and over. We got so close to getting a divorce that I actually got served papers. And all I had to do was go back to the attorney and sign my name. I knew that God would save this story for just the perfect time. So I read it. I went somewhere private and I read all these paperwork. And you know, I'm just a, I'm not saying a dumb country boy, but I am a country boy. And I read a bunch of big words. And I realized that everything we had agreed upon was right there in writing. There were no secrets. And so I decided, you know what? God, I'm done fighting. If it be your will, if this is what is supposed to happen, then I'm not going to fight it anymore. And I went back to that lawyer's office to sign those papers. True, as we're sitting here, 
I went probably wasn't 30 minutes after I left that office. It was a Friday. It was about 10 o'clock in the morning. So there was no reason why that door should be closed. I went to that lawyer's office and I knocked on that door with every intention of calling it quits, signing the paperwork and saying, I can't take it anymore, I'm done. And the door was locked. That's why I'm still married today. Because I had Jesus in my boat. I'm not saying that every marriage is going to go good. I'm not saying that we're always going to have bad times. Sometimes they do happen. We do serve a God of new beginnings. God did not cause our divorce. But sometimes it happens. But I do say that we do serve a God of new beginnings. All right, let's move on. Uh, I'd rather be in the storm with Jesus than to be in the storm without Him. That's where so many of us are today. Our hearts are about to explode with anguish. Our spirits are about to be crushed under burdens. Our lives are torn. Our minds are in fear. And Christ is not in our boat. Rather them than me, I say. My storm may be furious, but I'd rather ride the storm with Jesus than face the storms without him. And I'm reading this right off what I studied because I thought it was cool and I couldn't come up with anything as good as that. My storm may be furious, but I would rather ride the storm with Jesus than to face the storm without him. The storm is contained by our Savior. As we read, I want you to notice in the parable how the Lord responded to what happened. Think about the story. Think about the scene as I painted this story. The roar of the winds, the pounding of the waves, the cries of the disciples, the crash of the thunder, the crack of lightning, and Jesus is asleep. I'm here to tell you today, brothers and sisters, don't tell God how big your storm is. Tell the storm how big your God is. With all of these sounds, with everything that was going on, nothing woke Jesus. Not the lightning, not the thunder, everything that was going on. It's like my daughter. A tornado can be going through and she'll still be asleep on the couch. Me, I'm like first sound I'm up but with Jesus all of the sound that was going on and I can only imagine I wish we Steve as great as you are with videos I can just imagine how loud it would be in the middle of this whirlwind storm and Jesus is asleep you know what did wake him up the cry of his disciples his disciples were asking for help He will always hear the cry of his people above any storm. Psalms 50 verse 13 says, And call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Psalms 107 verse 13 says, Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distress. See, Jesus knew the storm was coming, but he didn't delay their departure. He permitted the storm. He led the disciples into the storm. He allowed them to feel the fury of the storm. He appeared to not care about the storm, but he was with them. And as long as he was with them, there was hope. So the Lord answers their cry and he steals the storm. He cried and he arose and rebuked the wind. Now rebuke, that kind of sounds like a bad word. When I looked that up, it says to chastise. Now how can you chastise something like the wind? It's like rebuking your car for not working right. 
It makes little sense until we realize who the one person who did the rebuking had influence over the air. It was God himself. There was something in this wind that was unseen to the human eye, but that was seen from Jesus Christ. And remember these storms that we're talking about are our storms in life. Satan is at work in our storms. Look at how Jesus rebuked the storm or the power behind the storm. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace. Be still. That's all he had to say. Basically, he was telling the old junkyard dog, Hey, quiet down. Put a muzzle on it. But he and he alone, he's the only person that I know of has power to calm the winds. Amen? He spoke to the elements as if they were a fearsome dog. And all the while, we may be blaming God for our storms when Satan may really be at work. And last but not least, our storms may be a comment on our state of mind. See, storms of life can be revealing. They expose our weakness, like I talked about. Sometimes the devil attacks us where we're weakest. At one point in my life, it was my relationship with my wife. I realized that before I could minister to other people, I had to minister to my household. I had to listen to what Jesus was telling me. And he said, love your wife. Storms expose weaknesses. They, pre- they reveal our human frailty. We've all experienced the power of storms. You know what storms do. They tear off the roofs in our houses. They flatten fences. They blow over trees. Basically what I'm saying is our storm exposes poor workmanship. It exposes our shallow roots and our decaying timbers. Storms of our life are no different. And the last thing they reveal is our faithlessness. The Lord said, why are you so faithful? Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? That seems pretty harsh, but think about it for a moment. The disciples failed to trust in Jesus' promise. See, at the very beginning of the parable, (coughs) Jesus told his disciples, let's go over onto the other side. See, he had promised them that it would be a safe trip. They didn't listen. If you're in a storm and the waves are beating around your head and you feel like you're going to sink and you can't take it anymore and you're ready to abandon ship, don't. Don't abandon ship. Jesus is saying, you'll get there. You will arrive. The disciples also failed to rely on Jesus' presence. He was already in the boat. What did they have to be afraid of? He is there with us too, for he has promised, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And last but not least, they failed to account for his power. Could he not perform a miracle? I mean, he's right here in the boat. What do we have to fear? Let me ask you a question in closing and then Rachel will come up here and sing a song. Is God up to your storm? Do you really feel that your circumstances have beaten God and that He's as overwhelmed as you are? All he's got to say is be still and the storm too shall pass. All you got to do is call out his name. Father God, we all have storms in our lives. 
We all have things that happen that weigh down on us, that, that try to knock us down. And we know that you are not the cause of the storms in our lives. But we know that it's our free will and that, that somebody else's decision may affect my life. And God, it's just a cycle. And if we ever want to stop this cycle and change it, it must start with us. Help us to not use any excuses or to bail out of our boats. Because first of all, Jesus, if you're in our boats, why would I ever abandon ship? You're not going to abandon me. So God, help us to praise you in the middle of the storm, to see your face, the light at the end of the tunnel, to see you through it all, and to be able to praise you with open hearts and open minds, even through tear-soaked faces and shirts covered in tears. God, it doesn't matter. Just praising you in the middle of it all, no matter what it is. And God, there are some big storms that will come our way, and we know that. Your word tells us that we will face storms, and the struggles will be more because we are your followers. And we can expect it. So God, help us to lift our hands no matter where we are, to lift our hands in praise and say thank you for being the same, for loving me the same, whether I'm in an extreme high or an extreme low time in my life. Whatever the season is, you are the same and you never change. So God, thank you for that. Thank you for being with us in our storms. Now just help us to recognize you and to see you not to try to control it ourselves but to just let go God as we leave this place we may face storms as soon as we walk out this door but we know that you are with us so God help us to, to share your love even if we're going through a storm help us to use that storm to reach somebody else for you, to tell somebody else about you and how you are helping us through the storms in our lives. We never know who might be going through the same exact thing we are. Use us, God. We love you so much. Thank you for being who you say you are. Thank you for loving us before we even loved ourselves, before we loved you, before we were even born. Just thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.